to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Today, let us discuss about methanol and some toxic alcohol related poisoning. Before that, let us see what are the effects of alcohol in our blood, uh, body. When patient takes alcohol, if it is more than 100 mg per deciliter, it is associated with cerebellar type of ataxia, more than 200. Patients are drowsy and confused at 400. Respiratory depression can occur. So, that is a problem. Normally, patient develops altered behavior, uh, irrelevant talk, ataxia, drowsiness, confusion. But if the levels are very high, it can produce respiratory depression. Some may require mechanical ventilation. Clinically, we make a diagnosis with smell of alcohol, high blood sugars because uh, alcohol normally increases the blood sugar. But remember, this blood sugar, which is very high, cannot be stored and cannot be utilized so patient can have high blood sugar but even then they can have uh, some findings of hypoglycemia in some patients high anion gap metabolic acidosis is very very common in most of the types of alcohols alcohol induced uh, problems so coma with uh, high anion gap metabolic acidosis classically points towards alcohol induced coma it can be an alcohol or toxic alcohol Management is mainly supportive management. You can see here, gastric lavage is helpful if the patient present less than one hour. Activated charcoal has got less role in alcohol or toxic alcohol ingestion. IV thiamine is very, very important. Uh, the dose is uh, in IV thiamine in alcoholism is 100 milligram followed by 50 uh, ml, 50 percent dextrose then dextrose infusion. What we have to remember is uh, this is not the uh, dose should be given in suspected thiamine deficiency. This is only a dose in alcohol in, in, in overdose. Thiamine normally uh, which can be very low in patients who is having chronic alcoholism. We know that thiamine is very very important for your, our neurological neuronal uh, neuronal cells and it can be utilized when we give dextrose. So, in a patient who is having uh, alcohol, chronic alcoholism and hypoglycemia, if you are or normal glycemia itself, if you are giving dextrose, the available thiamine in our body will be utilized for the uh, glucose metabolism. So, suddenly there will be a reduction in thiamine in the neuronal system and that can aggravate the problem and the patient can develop acute beriberi or the beriberi which is already there in the patient which can be suddenly aggravated. That can produce uh, vernicase and cephalopathy. So, we should be very careful. So, thiamine should be given. Uh, newer guidelines say that uh, thi th suspected thiamine deficiency, the dose is very high. 500 mg can be given initially, then 500 mg TID can be given. And if the patient is aggressive, we can give lorazepam 1 to 2 milligram IV can be given or haloperidol also can be given uh, 0.5 to 5 milligram IV can IV or IM can be given. Some patients who require uh, uh, like mechanical ventilation because of uh, severe respiratory distress uh, due to alcoholism can also be seen. Now, if we see the uh, metabolic pathways of ethanol, methanol, ethylene glycol, ethanol is a normal alcohol, methanol and ethylene glycols are toxic alcohols. You can see here uh, the methanol, the uh, product which is uh, formed inside our bodies, formic acid, that produces all complication and acidosis. Ethanol, the acetic acid produces acidosis. Ethylene glycol, the glycolic acid and oxalic acid produces or all complications and acidosis. So, these are the pathways uh, uh, where uh, uh, methanol and ethylene glycol produces uh, toxic complications and ethanol, uh, the acetic acid produces acidosis and uh, some uh, complication when it is taken in higher doses. Now, these are the common toxic alcohols. There are a lot of toxic alcohols. We are here going to discuss only methanol intoxication that produces formic acid and lactic acid and ketones. 
the cl clinical problems also expl explained in this chart i am not going to the details of this chart here because it takes a lot of time so we are going to discuss about methanol induced complication methanol is a toxic alcohol induced complication that can produce metabolic acidosis hyperosmolality retinal damage and blindness vitaminal damage and neuron neurological dysfunctions so these are the complication methanol can produce now methanol poisoning we can discuss here it is commonly called as industrial spirit it is also called as wood alcohol because it was used in uh, distillation of wood industry methanol is a common component nowadays uh, used in many solvents windshield washer fluid and paint removers it's a cns depressant like any other alcohol this is also cns depressant it is metabol metabolized into formaldehyde and formic acid this formic acid is the main culprit which produces uh, acidosis and retinal injury retinal pigmented epithelial cells and optic nerve cells are uniquely susceptible to formic acid and it can lead to visual loss so it's a type of retinal uh, retinal uh, disease which is produced by the toxic alcohol the main culprit here is formic acid bilateral basal ganglia lesions also seen in many patients uh, that produces all problems in neurological system the lethal dose is 30 to 50 ml blindness can also seen in as little as 10 ml of uh, toxic alcohol like methanol so very low dose of uh, methanol itself can produce problem now we have discussed most of the alcohols including this toxic alcohols can produce high anion gap metabolic acidosis some patients can have bradycardia and shock but remember alcohol generally they present with tachycardia because we know that alcohol induces autonomic dysfunction most of the patients can have high bp tachycardia but uh, when uh, at the terminal stages of the problem patient can have bradycardia and hypotension shock ophthalmological manifestations like visual loss normally occurs after uh, nearly 15 to 30 hours like after one day they present with visual loss but a small amount of methanol itself like 10 ml itself is enough to produce visual loss so we should be very careful patient who is having uh, history of ingestion of adulterated alcohol ingestion Uh, immediately they may come to the hospital but visual loss can occur uh, if the dose is very high immediately they can lose the vision but uh, if the uh, uh, amount is very small we have to wait uh, till one or two days uh, to get the um, mo uh, most important clinical finding like uh, visual loss patient can have diminished visual loss dancing and flashing spots uh, and dilated fixed pupils hyperemia of optic discs are classical finding papilledema can be there and most of the patients will have peripheral visual loss pupillary reactions uh, can be seen in some patient uh, cannot be seen in uh, patients who is having light light reflux can be uh, can be negative in this type of patients uh, because it's a peripheral type of visual loss the most of the patients complain complain uh, the blindness as snow field blindness decreased visual acuity as if standing in a snow field snow field so blurring of the vision is a classical explanation given by most of the patient later it will become a complete uh, visual loss and on examination we can see dilated fixed people uh, there will not be any uh, reaction to the light re light reflexes are completely reduced hyperemia of optic discs and papilledema can be there if we treat the patient early itself these changes can be reversible but if we don't treat the patient immediately 
then uh, it may uh, become a permanent problem. Uh, most of the patients are initially with lower doses of uh, toxic alcohol, they may have tachycardia, hypertension, but if the dosage is very high, the poisoning is severe, then they develop myocardial depression, bradycardia and shock. That is the difference between smaller doses and higher doses. Smaller doses are always excitatory and they increase the heart rate, they increase the uh, BP, but higher doses are depressants, they produce uh, even myocardial depression, bradycardia and shock. Now, all alcohols including toxic alcohols, we have to take an ABG, it shows metabolic acidosis. And these alcohols, they produce high anion gap metabolic acidosis. We can calculate the anion gap by sodium minus chloride plus bicarbonate. Elevated anion gap means more than 12. Uh, uh, initially, uh, like when the patient present with uh, uh, Initial stages of the uh, problem, patient can have normal metabolic uh, parameters, they may not have uh, acidosis itself. Later, when the patient uh, develops formic acid in their blood, they develop uh, high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Another important problem in this type of patients, that is a metabolic problem, we have to find out it, it is osmolar gap. We can find out the osmolar gap by serum osmolality minus calculated osmolality. So, cal we can calculate the osmolality by 2 into sodium plus glucose plus urea, uh, all in millimoles per liter. So, osmolar gap is normally elevated more than 10 millimoles per liter in uh, toxic alcohol ingestion. Osmolar gap also can be seen in ethanol, methanol, formaldehyde, ethylene glycol, isopropanol, ketoacidosis, mannitol, paraldehyde. So, so many conditions uh, it can be elevated. We should have strong clinical suspicion like patient can have high anion gap acidosis, metabolic acidosis, elevated osmolar gap. If they develop visual problems, then if they develop renal diseases, then only we should suspect toxic ingestion of uh, toxic alcohol ingestion. Like normal alcohol itself, we can have some of these findings, but they will not have visual disturbances and they will not have renal disorder. But toxic alcohol ingestion, they develop uh, retinal damage and they develop visual loss and they can uh, uh, also have renal disorders in some type of uh, toxic alcohol ingestion. No other lab diagnosis are uh, like uh, you can see the methanol, ethanol levels. Methanol concentration more than 25 milligram per deciliter is a diagnostic feature. Ethylene glycol level more than 20 milligram per deciliter is toxic levels. Methemoglobin level also can be seen in some of the ABGs you can see methemoglobin uh, levels. So, you can calculate serum osmolality by 2 into sodium by 1 by 1.6 plus glucose by 18 plus ethanol concentration by 4.6 if there is a mixed ingestion. Now, another important uh, calculation can be done in ethylene glycol toxicity, that is lactate gap. Ethylene glycol metabolism generate glycolate, which can be mistaken for lactate by portable lab assays that is point of care instruments utilizing, utilizing lactate oxidase. Lactate gap refers to the difference in lactate measurement via different methods. Elevated lactate on point of care ABG machines utilizing lactate oxidase and lower lactate is measured by the laboratory assay utilizing lactate dehydrogenase. So, that is called as lactate gap. This is classically seen in ethylene glycol, but many machines 
uh, many ERs may not have any point of care uh, mission. So this is only applicable for some point of care equipments. They utilize uh, lactate oxidase. Another important investigation that is calcium oxalate crystals. The presence of calcium oxalate crystals in urine may give a clue towards ethylene glycol toxicity, but it is not a much that all patients who sign calcium oxalate crystals in the urine should have uh, ethylene glycol toxicity. So, other other patients who is having uh, like a normal uh, other than this toxicity also can have calcium oxalate crystals. So, this is not a definite diagnostic criteria, but many patients who is having ethylene glycol toxicity can have calcium oxalate crystals in the urine. Now, we will see the management of uh, uh, toxic alcohol ingestion. So, no need to induce emesis even in most of the uh, toxicological emergencies. This is not advisable. So, do not induce emesis. Gastric aspiration or gastric lavage can be less uh, than if the patient present in less than one hour of the ingestion. Activated charcoal does not have any major role in any of any types of uh, alcohol intoxication. Folinic acid have some role in metabolism of formate, so that can be given. Folinic acid is leucovarin 1 mg per kg, maximum 50 mg, followed by folic acid 1 mg per kg IV every fourth hourly, six doses can be given. So, uh, IV folinic acid is available, folic acid IV is not available, so we can give IV folinic acid every fourth hourly or, or oral folinic acid is available, 25 milligram tablets are available, that can be started. Folic acid is not the active metabolite, metabolite, folinic acid is the active metabolite, so try to give folinic acid initially itself. Another important antidote is ethanol. It inhibits alcohol dehydrogenase. This will prevent further conversion of methanol to formic acid. So, indication of ethanol or formipasol that we will discuss afterwards. Methanol concentration more than 6 millimoles per liter or 20 milligram per deciliter and increased anion gap metabolic acidosis, visual loss or ethanol like intoxication in a patient with history of methanol ingestion and a low or undetectable ethanol levels. Ethanol or formipasol should be continued until methanol level falls less than 3 millimoles per liter or 10 milligram per deciliter. The loading dose of methanol is 10 ml per kg of 10% uh, ethanol in dextrose water IV over 30 minutes. It can be given per oral or nasogastric tube. So, that can be tried. What we should remember is this type of preparations may not be available in every emergency room or ER physician may not know how to give this type of drug. So, simple alcohol which is available locally can be tried so that uh, we can save the patient. It can be given through the uh, through peroral or nasogastric tube. So normal alcohol or ethanol should be given as soon as possible uh, to uh, prevent the formation of formic acid. Formipasol is the antidote. It's an alcohol dehydrogenase antagonist. Dose is 15 milligram per kg in 100 ml dextrose. IV over 30 minutes followed by 10 mg per kg IV 12th hourly for 4 doses. Now continue this drug till the concentration is less than 20 mg per deciliter. One, one important thing we should remember that many patients who have toxic alcohol ingestion may require dialysis or a patient who is having renal failure can also come with 
toxic alcohol ingestion so we should be very careful formipasol normally clears after dialysis so repeat loading dose is required after dialysis that is very very important if you are giving ethanol or formic uh, acid so ethanol or formipasol if the patient is undergoing dialysis we may have to reintroduce the loading dose another important thing is you can correct the acidosis with sodium bicarbonate more than correcting the acidosis it improves the and it increases the uh, excretion of the formic acid so sodium bicarbonate also can be tried hemodialysis is the ultimate me method to remove the uh, methanol and formic acid from the blood so that can also be tried if the levels are very high 50 mg per deciliter or if the metabolic acidosis is not corrected with routine therapy so we have uh, discussed about optic neuropathy methanol associated optic neuropathy another important drug this is used as a trial drug recently many papers are available on this aspect erythropoietin can be tried we know that erythropoietin is a uh, stimulating factor given for anemia especially in anemia of uh, chronic kidney diseases that can be tried many papers are available telling that this improves the situation it this improve the optic neuropathy problem in methanol induced optic neuritis so we can give intravenous erythropoietin 20000 units per day for three continuous days some physicians add pulse dose of methylprednisolone these two drugs are actually not given in major textbooks we can read about you can read about uh, this aspects of uh, treatment uh, for methanol poisoning so erythropoietin can be tried methylprednisolone also tried in many patients but uh, results are not very promising now we can see the treatment protocol for toxic alcohol induced complication we have discussed all of these things here we can give folinic acid available dose of 25 mg tid is a 25 mg tablets are available iv preparation if it is available we should use it formipasol or ethanol can be given to counteract alcohol dehydrogenase so it will prevent the conversion of methanol ethanol and ethyl glycol you can see the first thing is formipasol or ethanol then folinic acid can be tried then other drugs like thiamine calcium can also be tried but when we are giving calcium we should remember that it can precipitate calcium oxalate stones so that is not a good choice thiamine can be tried folinic acid can be tried and the major Uh, antidote is formipasol or ethanol now other important drugs we already discussed about thiamine how it acts then pyridoxine is another uh, vitamin there is vitamin b6 that also can be tried so these are the common add on therapies for toxic alcohol ingestion this chart tells you how to treat ethylene glycol toxicity here also main antidotes are formipasol and ethanol but add on drugs are thiamine and pyridoxine so we have discussed about some of the common toxic alcohols formipasol and ethanol are the major treatment antidotes for this metabolic acidosis should be corrected with uh, drugs like uh, soda bicarb or dialysis but remember newer drugs like uh, erythropoietin 
are being tested in many centers for this problem and the results are slightly promising methyl prednisolone also tried in many centers but uh, not as promising as erythropoietin but uh, we need to have more studies regarding these aspects of the uh, methanol toxicity treatment thank you